In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, greetings to you all who are able to share with us this time of worship, whether you are near or far. Also greetings to all our parishioners at Newton PNC, Kiaora, Kiorana, Pakalofalayatu, Maloni, Maloelelei, Isampulavinaka, Pakalofatu. Before we start, I want to let you know there will be Holy Communion before the end of our worship. So please get your bread and wine ready. Let us worship God. Shout for joy, the tomb is empty. Clap your hands, death is cheated. Dance and sing, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy and praise, with awe and wonder, with gladness and celebration, we worship you. Speak to us again today through all we read, all we hear, all we sing, and all we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us hear the word of God. Our lectionary readings today comes from the Old Testament. Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. And from the New Testament, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, 1 to 18. From Psalm 118, I will read from verses 22 to 24. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. From the Gospel of John chapter 20, I will be reading from verse 14 to verse 18. Then she turned around and so Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, if you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put it, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turns towards him and said, in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means, teacher, do not hold on to me. Jesus told her, because I have got, I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But I go to my brothers, tell them that I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Let us pray. Dear God, bless the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our theme this morning is Christ is risen. Mary was the first person to see the risen Christ. She went ahead of the other women and these women wanted to go to the tomb so that they may show their love for Christ in completing the burial preparations. 
Mary had taken her message to Peter and John and then must have been left behind in their race to the tomb so that by the time she got there, they were gone. So she stood there weeping. A whole conversation with the person she thought to be the gardener shows her love. She even said, if you are the man who had removed him, tell me where you have laid him. She never mentioned the name of Jesus. She thought everyone must know of whom she was thinking. Her mind was so full of him that there was not anyone else for her in all the world. She even said, I will take him away. How was a woman's strength to do that? Where was she going to take him? She had not even thought of these problems because her one desire was to weep her love over Jesus' dead body. As soon as she had answered the person she took to be the gardener, she must have turned again to the tomb and so turned her back on Jesus. Then came Jesus' single word, Mary, and Mary's single answer, Master. So we see there were two very simple and yet very profound profound reasons why Mary did not recognize Jesus. One, she couldn't recognize Jesus because of her tears. They blinded her eyes so that she could not see. When we lose a dear one, there is always sorrow in our hearts and tears in our eyes. But one thing we must always remember at such a time our sorrow is, in essence, selfish. It is of our loneliness, our loss, and our desolation that we are thinking. We cannot be weeping for one who has gone to be the guest of God. It is for ourselves we weep, and that is natural. And that at the same time, we must never allow our tears to Light us to the glory of heaven. The second reason why Mary didn't recognize Jesus, she insisted on facing in the wrong direction. She could not take her eyes off the tomb, so had her back to Jesus. Again, it is often so with us. At such a time, our eyes are upon the cold earth of the grave. At such a time, look away. That is not where our loved ones are. Their worn out bodies might be there, but the real person is in the heavenly places, in the fellowship of Jesus, face to face and in the glory of God. At the end, John said, Jesus sent Mary back to the disciples with the message that what he had so often told them was now about to happen. He was on his way to his father. And Mary came with the news. I have seen the Lord. It means I have met him. I know him. I am sure he is alive. I believe he is risen. If you read on, it says at the end of verse 19, Then Jesus came and stood among the disciples. Then he said, Peace be with you. He showed the disciples his scarred hands and feet. And the disciples started to believe that Mary's report was not just wishful thinking. It was true. So from here, Jesus did three things that changed the disciples forever. One, he said to them, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Here, 
the disciples who huddled in their little safe house like a bunch of cowards. Jesus was still interested in sending them to continue his mission. Two, Jesus came close to them and breathed on the disciples the Holy Spirit. This reminded us of the story in Genesis when God breathed life to Adam and Eve. On that day, Jesus told the disciples it was a new beginning. It was a new Genesis. And they were to be examples of a new kind of the human community. Three, this gave the disciples the greatest shock of their life after what happened on Friday. Anyone with scars like Jesus would have been expected to say, go and get revenge on those evil people who did this to me. But Jesus said, I'm sending you with the power to forgive. Go with peace and forgiveness. Those aren't the responses you expect from someone who had suffered what Jesus suffered. But in that brief moment, when the disciples' locked hideout was filled with Jesus' presence, everyone was at peace. Everyone except Thomas, who was not with them that night. When the disciples met Thomas later and told him what they had experienced, Thomas told the disciples that he wanted to touch those scars with his own hands and see for himself, or he won't believe. A week later, Jesus invited Thomas to see and touch his scars. He didn't criticize Thomas for doubting. He wanted to help him believe. Ten days later, Thomas believed. He saw God in the scarred man whose holy aliveness is more powerful than human cruelty. I want to say this again. He saw God in a scarred man whose holy aliveness is more powerful than human cruelty. Thomas, even though he didn't believe at first, he stayed with the disciples. He was open to the possibility that his doubt could be transformed into faith. At the end, it was this same Thomas who was the last to believe, who became the first to realize that Jesus was not only the Messiah, he was Almighty God. So like the disciples, we are also sent with the power to forgive. And that mission is not just for brave people, but for scared folk like the disciples who are willing to become brave. It isn't just for believers, but doubting folk like Thomas it isn't just for good people, but for normal people like you and me and Peter and Thomas and the disciples. It isn't just for men either. It's no secret that men in many cultures often treat women as inferior. Even on resurrection morning, when Mary Magdalene ruthlessly claimed that the Lord was risen, the disciples, the men, didn't offer her much in the way of respect. So, on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus was telling the disciples something by bypassing all of the male disciples and appearing first to a woman. The disciples experienced a new term here, fellowship from what had happened. A kind of belonging that it isn't based on status, achievement or gender. But instead, it is based on a deep belief that everyone matters. Everyone is welcomed and everyone is loved 
no conditions, no exceptions. It's not the kind of belonging we find at the top of the ladder among those who think they are the best. But at the bottom, among all the rest, with all the other failures and losers who have either climbed the ladder and fallen or never climbed in the first place. So on Easter Sunday, Jesus showed the disciples his scars and the disciples started to realize that they don't have to hide theirs. So fellowship is for scarred people and for scared people. Fellowship is for people who want to believe but aren't sure what or how to believe. So when the disciples come together, they begin to rise again, to believe again, to hope again, to live again. And it meant through fellowship, that little locked room becomes the biggest space in the world. Because in that space of fellowship, the Holy Spirit fills the disciples like a deep breath of fresh air. And this is good news. This is good news. This is good news indeed. This is a great reminder during this time of our journey where COVID-19 is a death threat to the whole world. Life as we have known it has stopped. Where we are not allowed to go to work. We are not allowed to play with our dear friends. We are not allowed to visit our dear ones. We are not allowed to go to school. We are not allowed to attend church services. And we are even put unmasked because of fear of death. But remember, like the darkness of the Good Friday, it didn't go on forever. There is Easter Sunday. There is resurrection as we celebrate today. So how do you feel this morning? Remember what the psalmist said many years ago. This is the day of the Lord's victory. It is one of the many days that the Lord has made. God has given it to you and me so that you can celebrate it, live it, grow from it, and serve him with joy. So today, tell the whole world again, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. So later on, during communion, let us lift the bread and glass of wine and say, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We too are rising up. We are rising up indeed. Let us arise in fellowship and continue serving him faithfully. In Jesus' name, Amen. At this time, I will now invite one of the sons of the PIC Newton, Mr. Benjamin Marquisi, an opera singer, to sing us the hymn, To God Be the Glory. And while Ben is singing, please get your bread and wine ready in front of you. Of a million angels could not express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be. 
I owe it all to Thee. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with His blood. Save me with his power, he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done to God be the glory to God. Thank you, Payne. God bless you and Mina in your ministry. We are now going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Welcome to the Lord's Supper. It is for those who will come and see in broken bread and poured out wine. Symbols of Jesus' life shared for us on the cross. I invite all who are seeking him to come and share in the feast. Let us pray. Loving God, bless the bread and wine. Bless us, your people, in bread and wine. Help us to recognize Christ presence, the one who endured sorrow to bring us joy, despair to bring us hope, and death to bring us life. In bread and wine, help us to receive his body and his blood so that we will never hunger or thirst again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us hear the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. <clears throat> and when he had given thanks as we had, he broke it and said, This is my body 
which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The bread The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you, let us take it. We'll do the same with the wine. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Let's continue on prayer. Lord, you appear to your disciples, bringing new beginnings, a new chapter, speaking your word of peace, promise and comfort. Thank you for the knowledge that whatever life may bring, whatever we may face, we should never lose hope for you conquered evil, vanquished hate, and defeated death, pledging to walk with us to the end of time and beyond. We thank you that it is in that assurance we live and move and have our being. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us sing to the praise of God our last hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. If you have a hymn book, you can join in.
the benediction. Praise God. When faith grows cold, rekindle it. When commitment grows weak, strengthen it. When love fades, restore it. When vision with us, revive it. Speak afresh into our lives and breathe your spirit upon us so that we may know and respond to you with all our hearts and live each day to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Easter to you all. Thank you.